Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. We just want to welcome our live streaming audience today to the Living in Victory broadcast. Hallelujah. So glad that you have tuned in today, and we believe that you will be all the blessed by it. I am Dr. Sadie Jones, and I'll be administering the word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us just knit our hands and hearts together. We're going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and all the privileges of being in the body of Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that we are part of your family. We just give you honor and praise and glory for this day, for this is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. With great expectancy, we believe that we will have a supernatural service today and every person under the sound of my voice will be blessed by the word of God in the name of Jesus. We just commis commit this meeting into your charge for safekeeping and all that are in, in attendance, Lord, that they will be touched. We thank you and agree that we will be increased and encouraged as a result of your spoken word. If there's any sick among us, Lord, we believe that they will be healed, any unsaved will be saved, the bound will be loosed, and delivers, and all of the rest of us will be filled, will be filled with the word of God. We invite the supernatural to be present, and to, Lord, to have your way in Jesus' name. We thank you for our pastor, our first family, as they walk in your divine favor, wisdom, and courage. We give you praise that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We call this nation blessed and back to you, because godliness makes a nation great, but sin is a disgrace to any people. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. Just hallelujah. So we're going to talk today about the word of God, the abundant living. Abundant living is for you. You know, a lot of times we have a lot of props, we have a lot of excuses, we have a lot of means and the things that we say that is not exactly in line with the word of God. So we want to talk this morning on how we can get where we need to be in God. And it's not necessarily one thing or the other. It's just one and the other, all that God has for us. Don't you want it? Amen. I want everything that God has for me. Everything that I have learned and I'm not coming up short in. I want it. I want mine. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to talk about. It's such a joy to be here this morning and Amen. in the presence of the saints. Amen. And not out there with the ants. No. Praise Amen. the Lord. So to be a kingdom citizen, to know Jesus, to walk with the Holy Spirit daily, to have a heavenly father, the great Jehovah, we just said, thank you, Jesus. Such a privilege to be here today. So let's turn in our Bibles or on our devices or whatever we're using today to St. John, the first chapter. Sometimes it's always good to go back to things that we probably learned in our, when we first were saved and come into the knowledge, came into the knowledge of the Lord. So let's just look at a few things. We're not going to go too deep today and, uh, you know, what revelation and that kind of stuff. We want to give you things that will revelate, but all, also will make you more what you need to be in everything that God has for you. Amen. So let's look at St. John, the first chapter, in verses 1 uh, through, let's see, let's go through 1 through 5. We want to read that together. Is that okay? Amen. Okay, let's read. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It comprehended it not. So we see that Jesus was a Word of God made flesh. He is the Word of God. He was made flesh, and he dwelt among us. He still dwells among us, with us, and in us as the person of the Holy Spirit. 
So we want to be thankful to God for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he is yet to do. Let's look over at, uh, let's see, Psalms uh, 105. We're just going to take a little bit of uh, today and see what we can find out about the word of God. Because we ought to be thankful, amen? amen. In verse 1 of Psalms 105 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous work. Glory, be, glory you in his holy name. Let the heart of men rejoice that seek the Lord. So let us rejoice when we seek the Lord. Let us not leave today the same way that we came in. And let us look forward to going forward in the things of God. We're not just here to, uh, you know, show your new outfit and to see how cute you are. You know, you're still cute, you're still looking good, but let us get something on the inside of us that would make a difference because we need a difference made in our life. Amen? Looking back at St. John, the 10th chapter and verse 10, which is the dividing word of the uh, line of the Bible, so, you know, many people say, so let's just look at that. St. John 10 and verse 10 says, A thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Amen. Jesus has come to give us an abundant life. Amen. The thief, he don't care nothing about you or your mama, or your grandmama, or your mother-in-law. He still comes to kill, steal, Amen. and destroy you. That's his mission. That's what he plans to do, and he thinks he's going to get away with it. But I come to enlighten you this morning that he's not getting away with it. We're going to find out how we can walk and stomp on his head and get him where he needs to be, and that's under our feet. So that matters to you, including what everything that he has for you, when it is Resident in you, he comes in various ways to steal from you. You know how the sower sowed the word, and he come to steal the word and to take it away and to render you helpless and powerless. But we come today to let him know that we have power over him. We have been given that power because Jesus came for us to give us and not to take. He wants us to have a rich and satisfying life. Is that your testimony? Are you Amen. living satisfied according to what God intended? Hallelujah. Oh, to be satisfied in Jesus, the vast abundance each of us have that God wants to give for us, Amen. what he wants to give to us, more than just life itself with all the challenges and all of the things that come our way and, you know, things that kind of hinder us. But he has given us authority over all the power of the enemy, and we can walk in that authority. Amen. Never think that you can't because you don't feel like it. It's not based on how you feel. It's based on what the Word of God has already said. So we know that what Jesus did for us, he now sits on the right hand of God. He's not just sitting there eating cookies. He is interceding for us that our faith fail not. So how important do you think that your faith should be? Amen. It's very important. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We have to do that on a daily basis, not just when situations present themselves, but every day, every day. of your life, all day. Amen. Walk by faith. Amen. 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 Keep your heart right. right. Get in places where you need to be and allow the things that God has given us. Amen. We know that from the beginning, he has given us the potential in this life to soar, to dominate, to subdue, and to have dominion. That's what we need to do. We need to be the ones that have that dominion. We subdue and we do the things that we need to be. Genesis 1.26 tells us that, that we have been given that authority over the, all of the authority of the enemy. The word of God has empowered us. When used effectively, we will rise up. Amen. We will rise up. Amen. Some people say they're rising up, but I don't know. But we will <laughs> rise up because of what the word has already said. Amen. 
Let's look over at Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians 3. Let's see. Colossians 3 and verse, what verse are we going to? 16 and 17. Number 15 of Colossians 3 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Amen. Verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. That's what we ought to do. It's not a hard task for us to do, so let's just do it. Amen. Let's do it. Amen. This is, um, just look over at Ephesians 5. That's just right across the way here. Ephesians 5 and verse uh, 19 and 21 says, Speak into yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So the word is telling us here that we ought to be speaking to ourselves not, you know, self-talk, I'm not this, I'm not that. No, you're what you are. God has made you, and praise the Lord. Amen. So you speak to yourself and make melody in your heart with songs and singing. Amen. You may not sing like the voices of praise, but whatever singing you do, just do it quietly. <laughs> but giving thanks always. You know, let's give thanks always for all things unto God. Amen. Let's look over at Psalms 34. Psalms 34, and let's start at verse 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. That's what the Lord has done for us. Amen. So when we look at these things that God has done, we need to be sure that we are living the life that God came to give us. Amen. Not beneath our privilege, not just on barely get a long street, but that we're living our life, we're living the abundant life, we're living according to what the Word says, and we're going to walk in it, and we're going to have it. So let's look at um, Hebrews 13. Going to set this up to see everything that Jesus came to give us. Amen. Because you don't want to inherit something, and then they say, you inherited such and such a thing, and then you don't ever get it. You just keep saying, I got it. I, they left it to me. But what do you have it? Right. Amen? Amen? So we want to look at 15 of Hebrews 13. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So these are things that we have talked about that we ought to be doing every day, realizing who God is, who Jesus is, and what he has done for us and what the Holy Ghost is yet doing for us. Amen. So we want to know that that's all the, these are some of the things that are available to us. What about uh, healing for our bodies, our soul, and our well-being? Thank you, Lord. you know, when you look at um, the body of Christ, more than 50%, I, you know, nobody has taken this toll, but from just the people I know, most people are on medication. And I'm not coming against medication. You know, you got to have it till you can get to where it is that, Amen. you know, you can believe and you can stand and get the manifestation of what it is that you need. Amen. But when we talk about 
By his stripes we are healed. Really? How many medications medications are you taking? One for this and two for that and one to offset that one and this and that. And it's costing you money. Amen. Amen. They're going up on your insurance if you get too many pills. You know, a lot of people have different ailments and things that they are being that they are going through. And I'm, you know, not talking about anybody that's on any kind of medication. Amen. I'm just talking about everybody getting off of all medication. Amen. 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 See, you get so used to being, okay, it's time for my physical. Let me get to see Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe, what you say? You got high blood pressure. You got diabetes. You got this. And, you know, you, you're not walking straight. There's something wrong with your hip. There's something wrong with your back. There's something wrong with this. So as a result of that, we got five pills we're going to give you to take twice a day. Amen. So, you know, that limits your time to eat because you got to take them pills. Amen. It limits your time to go out and do things. Oh, I forgot my pill. Amen. Oh, I got to go back and get my pill kind of faint. I got to have my pill. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm not making light of that. But what I am saying, do you want to get off of those things? Amen. Do you want to get away from that? Amen. Do you want your heart to pump like it should? Amen. Amen. You don't want to take this so you won't have a stroke. And don't take that because you might have a heart attack. Hey, 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 somebody do something. This ain't working. Our bodies ought to be healed. 1 Peter 2.24. Let's look and see what that says. You know, we want to get everything that God has provided for us. Amen. Verse 24, 1 Peter 2 says, Who his own self bear our sins in our own bodies on the tree, and we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Thank you, Lord. See, it says by the stripes of Jesus he was healed. It's not like when you think about Jesus and, you know, they painted some stripes on him and, you know, that's what healed us. Amen. It's nothing like that. Amen. Jesus, they whipped him. Some Amen. people say all night long and they beat him. And he was just, all of his body was messed up. But he said, I'll do this to redeem my people back to God. Amen. Jesus did a work for us. Oh, how he loved us Amen. that he bought us sickness on on the tree Amen. they just whipped him did all these things to him but he stood it and he's you know he didn't give up on us he just went ahead and took it they whipped him tore him up and he still remained the ransom for us Amen. sometimes you may feel like after all he did for us we ought to at least be able to get in on that and make those stripes that he bore not in vain if we're going to stay sick, if we're going to stay broke down, if we're going to stay uh, afflicted, then why did Jesus take that? He died for us, Amen. for our sins, and he did those things just for us. So I would like to see all of us get to the place where we need to be. Amen. You know, if any of us were to go to the doctor today, they got, well, I, you know, it's not so good a report, brother so-and-so. We, we found this. We found that. You know, if you could just trash all that and just walk out and say, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen. You are healed in Jesus' name, Amen. but are you going to walk Praise in it? Amen. Or are you going to believe it? Amen. Or are you going to just sit back and just let what the doctor says govern your life all the way? Amen. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes, you know, you have to get where you need to be in order to receive that. Amen. You know, if you got blood pressure medicine or whatever kind, don't you stop taking your medicine. I'm not saying that at all. Amen. I'm saying that when you get here, you're going to know you're here. Amen. When you get the manifestation of what God wants for you, you know, you will be able to, to know that. But sometimes you feel like after all he did, was it worth it? Are you getting part of what he did that for us? You know, you say, well, I've been standing on the word and I've been doing this however way you've been doing it. If it's not working, let's kind of change the way we're doing it 
because God, Jesus, has already paid the price. He doesn't have to come back and, you know, look at it and see, well, you know, I took 28 stripes, or so maybe I better take 29 or 30. He's already done that. Amen. So we as his people, we as the born again, we as children of God, we are kingdom citizens. We are the ones that can do it. And we can show the world one way that they can get in, get with God is see how he heals his people. Amen. See how we walk on the word. See how the word is make a difference in our life. Amen. You know, I know the um, aging process is, you know, that, that's still kind of, you know, we still age. Amen. You know, it's, it's not like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, she said the word said this, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, join this league and do this and do that and see if they'll let me be a majorette. No, you're too old for that. Amen. That's, that's not what you need to do. It may be something where you can be a team mother or go somewhere and see somebody else do some things. But all of your life, Amen. there's a beauty in it. Amen. You know? It's not like, well, you know, I... I wish I was 25. I don't wish I was 25. Amen. I don't want you to turn that backwards. I don't wish I was 52. Because I'm 53. No, I'm not. <laughs> but see, you have to know how, how what God has provided for you at every age, at every stage in your life. It's a good stage. It's not bad. If he's allowed you to live 67 to 80 years, praise God. I see some of... Some of the born again in Christ, they're still working. They're still doing things in the ministry. They're still doing this and that. They're not giving up. You know, they don't may not have the manifestation and all of the things that they need, but they believe in God. Yes. Evidence that they're believing God is they're still working, still coming to church, still giving. Amen. Hadn't stopped on that giving just because, well, you know, I'm on a fixed income. Yeah, it may be fixed, but if you give what you're supposed to give, that word will still work for you. Amen. Amen. We are Bible believers. We are kingdom citizens. We can have what God says that we can have. And God will do what he said he would do. There's nothing too hard for him. Isn't that amazing? Whatever you're called to go through, wherever you are, God is still there to help you get through it. Let's look over at Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 says, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Amen. And verse 4 says, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. We understand that the earthly ministry of Jesus healed those that came unto him. When people came to Jesus, he didn't ask them where they worked. He didn't ask them how you get this. He didn't ask you, you, you eat too many pork chops. That's why. No, he healed them all. Many of them had faith to be healed, and then Jesus just healed everybody. So these are the things that we look at, things in the Bible. What did Jesus do? What would Jesus say? If Jesus has already done it for one, the Bible says he'll do it for you. He has no respect of person. You, we know in the Bible, you know, uh, many people that Jesus healed. He didn't want to see anybody sick or infirmed in his earthly ministry. We know the woman with the issue of blood. You know, people talk about, you know, how she got healed. She was believing something different from the rest of the people in the crowd. The woman bowed together. She was in the church. She didn't stay home, so you know people going to look at me funny. I don't walk like I used to walk. I'm bowed over. But she said, no, nah, I'm going to church so I can give my offering. Get, pay my tithes. I'm going. And she was there when Jesus came. The man with the withered hand. He had a withered hand. People looked at him funny. I'm sure. But what did he do? He was there in church. He was there in the sanctuary. He was there in the temple. 
and Jesus is stretched forth your hand. You never know how Jesus is going to heal you. You might think it's a hard thing, but it may, it may, Jesus may have another idea. You know, you may know somebody that's sick and infirm, and God can raise them up. The power of God, the Spirit of God can raise them up. And like those lepers, they were, you know, being outcasts because they were lepers. And they said, Jesus, if you would, you can heal me. Jesus said, I will, and they got healed. And they were so unthankful, you know, most of they didn't come back to thank Jesus and bow down and worship him, just one out of the ten. So will you be the one out of the ten that will receive the things that God has for you, no matter what anybody else says or what they do? They may be calling you a holy roller. You don't speak nothing but the word. If that's going to bring me my healing, that's what I'm going to speak. Because, you know, you have to say within yourself, I want to be healed. Everybody else just going along and, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. Praise God. I believe that too. But the thing is, you might want to get rid of something that the, that the doctors say that is incurable, or something that you want to live with the rest of your life. But I thank God for good doctors and good nurses and the medical profession and what they know and how they can keep you running and keep you going. Amen. Amen. Even all of those things to keep you going so that you can be gone above. Because without those things, you probably would be beneath. You know, because see, a lot of times we don't know a lot of things, but we know that where we are, we don't have to stay there. You know, we get a condition or we get a report and we just take that as our lot in life. It is not your lot in life. It does not not have to be that way. Because we know the things that Jesus did. He brought sight to the blind. He caused the dumb to talk, cast out devils out of a child. And, you know, he did all those things because they were of the devil. Peter and John at the gate beautiful told the lame man to rise up and walk. And he did, just just like they told him. Because, see, Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, Acts 10.38. And they said he was oppressed not because he did something wrong, but the devil was there. How many of you all believe in the devil? It's not a trick question. I mean, do you believe there's a devil? Do you believe he's the one that's making you sick and get you oppressed? It's not God. Lord, I've done this and I've done that, and look what you let happen to me. And we're going to see a little bit later on, God will do his part. He just needs you to do, do yours. When we talk about what we're doing with the word, the faith, and the anointing, we have been given the area, that area of healing to bring a part in our life. Even for yourself, sickness and disease wearing you out because it's in the natural, but you can get away from that. You don't have to stay there. So I want you to look at it today. You know, I'm, you, I'm not saying something that can't happen. I'm saying something that can happen, but you need to agree with the word to cause it to manifest. Amen. Amen. To keep you there. So you say, well, how can I do that? You need to examine your faith package. Look closely at what God has promised you. So you have to stay in the word. You can't just get in the word or something you learned years ago and then just, you know, I haven't wet read the word yet. You read this report. You saw this on the news. Oh, Lord, the news. But when you look at what the word of God said and you examine what he said for you, you need everyone that needs, you need to take a scripture And stand on it. I believe I'm healed. Amen. When you take medicine, take it in the name of Jesus. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. And you take that medicine, Lord, I thank you that I am healed. Amen. Don't stop doing that until you have your manifestation. Amen. Take the word as medicine, according to Proverbs 17, verse 22. Let's look at that. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. 
And so what does that tell you? That tells you that we need to have a merry heart, we need to have a good attitude, and we need to know we are kingdom citizens of God and that we can do what the word says that we can do. Take your medicine, confess that the word is working mightily in you, bring in a healing and a cure. I believe it, Lord. I believe it. I'm not going to stay this way. I'm not going to stay down here. Not being able to do this, that, and the other. Like I said, I know the aging process makes a difference in some things that you can do, but there's so much other that you can do, and the Lord wants to show himself strong on you. Your faith is God's word. It is the key to your deliverance and your cure. Confess that you are healed in Jesus' name, that your body functions in the perfection in which God created it to function, and command your body to line up with the word of God. Amen. Remain obedient and steadfast yes. in the word. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. You're not put down because without it, you may be put under. I said that earlier. You don't want to be put under at this point. You want to get the victory. You know, it said that some people, well, you know, you got to die with something. Well, you don't have to be sick to die. Get well and then die. <laughs> you know, they, you know, it looked like they're not going to make it, but nothing is too hard for God. God can heal you. He can bring about that difference. And then I know like Dr. Hagen and Dr. Charles Capps and some other people, they say, you know, I was ready to go. Take me, Jesus. That's what you want to be. You don't want to say, well, you know, he had a bad heart. If his heart is in line with God's word, he doesn't have a bad heart. He can live and not die. Amen? Amen. And live their life out and complete the work that God has for them. Because God has a work and God has a, a, a way for you to minister to people and to be what you need to be, every one of us. Everybody is not called to do the same thing, praise God. But some of us are called to do different things and, you know, they have a lot of ideas and they're creative and they're making their mark on the, wor on the world. Amen. But if you're sick and both knees are captured and, you know, you can't get about, you know, there may be some things that you can do in that capacity, but you don't have to stay there. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you don't have to stay there. Amen. Amen. So imagine and visualize what it would be like to have a healed body and a mind to serve God. Amen. 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 Get up and go serve God and do what God has called you to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You need to study to show yourself approved unto God. We must have a kingdom mindset in order for the word to work for us. Otherwise, that old mindset and the enemy and all is going to keep you bound. But if you want to get loosed and you want to go forth in the things of God, you've got to change your mind. Right. We know what Romans 12 tells us. Let's look at that for just a minute right. and see how we can, because I want to see all of us get rid of this thing. Amen. You know? Amen. So we're going to look at Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, Amen. that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. That's what you want to prove. Yeah. You don't want to think like the world thinks. You want to think like kingdom citizens think. Get a kingdom mindset. What does God say about it? To function as you should. And the, that renewal of the mind is not automatic. It's not something that happened once. It's something you do every day, every day, every day. Because wrong thinking can bring you wrong results. Amen. Amen. We want to become God inside minded. We have the mind of Christ. We can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. So you can do those things. Third John tells us how he wants us to prosper and be in health and those things and listen to what the God has to say and we're going to do it. Amen. Are we going to change our mind to do what God says amen. we can do? Amen. Oh, amen. Let's look over at Isaiah, the 38th chapter.
Isaiah 38 and verse 1. It says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah put on his death clothes. No, he didn't. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. He had already gotten the mandate from what God says that was going to happen to him. But he said, oh, no. He turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. See, he may put God in remembrance. God had told him what, you know, you're sick unto death. You, you can accept that. But he said, Lord, look, give me some more. He said, I beseech thee, I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart. That means he had a good heart to do what God had called him to do. He wasn't a gossiping person. He wasn't running around with somebody else's wife. Amen. Or somebody else's husband. Amen. But he had kept the faith, in other words, you know, in the Old Testament, he had done what God says and done that which is good in their sight. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell, say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, and I have, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears before. Behold, I will add unto thee 15 years. I will add 15 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of you, if God added 15 years, we would want you to do what God would want you to do, not just what you've been doing. Amen. Amen. He said, this is what I have been doing. I've had a perfect heart, and I've done what you have called me to do. Amen. So he didn't say, well, you know, I just come to church on first Sunday. I don't come all during the week, and I don't do nothing when I get there. That's not what he said. He said, he, I've been doing what you had called me to do, in other words, before you, and I have walked before thee in truth. He has set himself as an example. This is what a person of God uh, should do. So Hezekiah got the attention of God, and he got 15 more years. If you knew that you were going to have 15 more years, some of us, you know, we would be getting pretty ancient then. But if we be in good health and if we do what God has called us to do, praise God anyhow. Amen. We would be satisfied about where we are. And we could set examples in the body of Christ as kingdom citizens, continue to bring praise, honor, and glory to the Lord. Healing is for today. Healing is for all. Healing is for you. And don't take offense because you, you know, may not be healed now, and, you know, why can't you say something else? But see, if you take this word into your heart, and you make up your mind that you're going to do it, you won't be in the same place you were when you were infirm. So healing is for you. As believers having dominion, notes that we have responsibility because we are created God-like to prosper and to take care. So don't take ownership of your sickness and of your disease. You know, my old blood pressure, my old this and my old that, don't take that ownership. Point out, let us point out, we talked about who God had healed and how they had wanted those things. And Berlin Bartimaeus in Mark 10, the 46th chapter, he said, your faith has made you whole. Amen. See, he made that decision. I don't want to stay blind. Amen. I don't want people to keep putting uh, money in my cup right. and little kids come by and take it out. I don't, because I can't see, I'm blind. But the Bible says he heard something. You all are hearing something this morning. You're hearing what the word says. We heard that Jesus was coming by. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Oh, have mercy on me. All those people said, Father, man, be quiet, man. See, they could see. 
but he's cried all the more. They said, I've told you to be quiet. He said, no, no, Jesus coming by, I want to receive my sight. And Jesus called him and said, who is this guy that won't give up? Who is this guy that keeps calling my name? Bring him to me. So they got his attention. Then they, the people said, he's calling for you. Yeah, but you had told him to be quiet. He's calling for you. So blind Bartimaeus, he took off that blind robe that the blind people wear, and he threw that down because he know after I see Jesus, I won't be blind no more. Woo, thank you, Jesus. He said, I won't be blind no more. And so he got what he needed from the Lord. And Jesus said, go, your faith has made you whole. So it's the will of God for you to be healed. Hearing all of that, let the ball roll in where, but speaking the word, speak the word, speak the word. So those are things that we can see what Jesus did. What can you do? You can believe the word, confess the healing scriptures, and line up with the word of God, meditate on the word day and night, change your attitude. Because sometimes uh, you don't get healed because you got the wrong spirit, you got the wrong attitude. Why it happened to me? didn't happen to them other folk. That's beside the point in immaterial. You better get yourself together so you can get from the place that you are to the place where you need to be. When you work the word, it always works for you. We can go to the place, have confident trust in the living God. Lord, I have been believing you, but I think I can do a little bit better believing. I can stop talking a lot of junk. I can stop saying things about people. I can stop doing this because I'm believing for my healing. I'm believing for my deliverance. I'm believing for this disease to loose me and let me go. I'm believing for the devil not to come my way because I have authority over him. Devil, you go from me in Jesus' name. You're not going to take me out. You're not going to take me down. I'm going on with Jesus. I'm going on with Jesus. Amen. So let me encourage you. Remain in faith. To God and be faithful. To call the the just shall be shall live by faith. We already know that. Don't cut back on your church attendance and in the things you do for God. Give like you've never given before. Because you are living in your giving. If you don't give, you will not live in that way. Abundance is not just talking money. Because a lot of people got a lot of money, but they're miserable because they can't get up and walk. They can't go out in the weather. You know, you can't go out because the sun's shining. You can't go out because the sun's not shining. What can I do? Just go somewhere and sit down. You don't want that to be you. Love one another as Jesus loved. John 13, love your brothers, your neighbors. Amen. Just as Jesus did. Refuse to let fear and anxiety rule you. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Refuse to get easily ticked off. Flow in the word. Flow in peace. Well, you know, they uh, I got ticked out. I tell you, I'd like to lose my religion. No, you got to keep yourself. Keep peace. Don't allow those things to overtake you. Because they can harm you and come against you. Change your mind and start to think on according to Philippians 4, 8, things that are good, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are true, things that are of a good report. That's what we're thinking on because our mind is being renewed to the word of God and we are kingdom citizens. Commit your work to God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Pray without ceasing. Don't forget to pray. You know, the enemy tries to get you off of everything that will help you. So you're not ignorant of his devices, but you're going to be smart in the things of God because you have the word. Commune with him often. Learn the presence of God. Oh, to be in the presence of God. You know, the presence of God is like nothing else. So that's what you need to look for, to be with him. Don't let your day be too busy or if you have to do it at night, wherever you want to get before God. Lord, I just, in your presence, I just thank you. I believe you. Praise and worship him daily. Borrow lessons from David. David said, you know, he just 
wrote all those songs because he believed God. Yeah. Things that he went through, things that he did that were wrong, God blessed him because he was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. He believed God. He loved the Lord. Trust God with your whole heart and offer the sacrifice of righteousness. Men and women of God, this is your time to be a testimony, to testify to the greatness of God. We serve a great God, amen? amen. We serve a God that is more than enough. Whatever you have need of today, God will make that happen for you. Amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to thank our... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to thank our live streaming audience for tuning in with us today. We trust that something that has been said has helped you and that will make a difference in your life as kingdom citizens. So if you're getting involved in that, or if you have needs in your life, whatever it is, there's some information that will be available for you on the screen. And if you want to add, add Jesus to your heart, bring him into your heart, we're going to pray with you for that. So Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you, Father. And I ask you to come into my heart to save me in the name of Jesus. I believe that I receive it. In Jesus' name, and I thank you for it. Amen, amen, amen. So Jesus is coming to your heart, and then we say goodbye for you to you on live streaming, and we'll see you the next time. Amen. Yeah.